Good morning, everyone. I uh, hope everybody had a great Labor Day weekend. I am Jennifer here with JD's Realty and Auction. We go live every Monday morning. Typically today it's a little different since this was Labor Day weekend, um, but normally you can find us here every Monday morning at about 9 a.m. If you want to subscribe and hit that notification bell, you will get um, a little taste of our classes here on Monday morning. So we try to cover something interesting every Monday. Today, we're going to talk about The Illusionist and a brief history of the magician and magic. So, magic, which encompasses the sub-genres of illusion, stage magic, and close-up magic, among others, is a performing art in which audiences are entertained by tricks, effects, or illusions of seemingly impossible feats using natural means. It is to be distinguished from paranormal magic, which are effects claimed to be created through supernatural means. It is one of the world's oldest performing arts. The term magic derives from the Greek word magia. The word evolved to refer to the ritual acts performed by Persian priests known as magwai, and eventually came to mean any foreign, unorthodox, or illegitimate ritual practice. So ritual practice and illusion, successful acts of illusion could be perceived as if it were like a feat of magic supposed to have been able to be performed by the ancient magoi. The performance of tricks of illusion or magical illusion and the apparent workings and effects of such acts have often been referred to as magic and particularly as magic tricks. The discovery of witchcraft published in 1584 was meant to help stop the frenzied craze of killing persons suspected of being witches by explaining the secrets of magic. During the 17th century, many books were published that described magic tricks. Until the 18th century, magic shows were a common source of entertainment at fairs. The father of modern entertainment magic was Jean-Eugène Robert Houdin, who had a magic theater in Paris in 1845. Towards the end of the 19th century, large magic shows permanently staged at big theater venues became the norm. As a form of entertainment, magic easily moved from theatrical venues to television magic specials. Modern entertainment magic, pioneered by 19th century mag magician Jean-Eugène Robert Houdin, has become a popular theatrical art form. In the late 19th and early 20th centuries, magicians such as Maskelyne and Devant, Howard Thurston, Harry Keller, Harry Houdini achieved widespread commercial success during what has become known as the golden age of magic. During this period, performance magic became a staple of Broadway theater, vaudeville, vaudeville and music halls. Jean-Eugène Robert Houdin, known as the father of modern entertainment mm -hmm. magic, was originally a clockmaker. Houdin performed or opened a magic theater in, in Paris in 1845 and transformed the art of magic from one performed at fairs to one the public actually paid to see in a theater. His special, he specialized in constructing mechanical automa that appeared to move and act as if they were alive. One of his most beautiful creations was an automata orange tree that in combination with a sleight of hand trick produced, produced both real orange fruit and an object such as a ring that was submitted by a member of the audience. And here is a period era picture of that trick. I actually have a YouTube video if we have time. I'll show you the trick being performed with the original orange tree. It's pretty awesome. So stage magic of the late 19th and early 20th century, towards the end of the century, large magic shows per permanently staged at big theater venues became the norm. British performer J.N. Maskelyne and his partner Cook were established at the Egyptian Hall in London's Piccadilly in 1873. Their show incorporated stage illusions and reinvented traditional tricks with exotic, often <clears throat> oriental imagery. Maskelyne and Cook invented many of the illusions still performed today, one of his best known being <laughs> levitation. Harry Houdini, the escapologist and magician, whose name, whose real name was Eric Weiss, took the stage name from Robert Houdin and developed a range of stage magic tricks, many of them based on what became known as his death as death as escape after his death, excuse me, as escapology. Houdini was genuinely skilled in techniques such as lock picking and escaping straitjackets, but also made full use of the range of conjuring techniques including fake equipment and collision collusion with individuals in the audience. 
Houdini's show business savvy was great uh, as his great, was as great as his performance skills. Magic retained its popularity in the television age with magicians such as Paul Daniels, Doug Henning, and Darren Brown modernizing the art form. As a form of entertainment, magic easily moved from theatrical venues to television specials, which opened up new opportunities for deceptions and brought stage magic to huge audiences. Famous magicians of the 20th century included Okito, David Devant, Harry Blackstone Sr. and Jr., Howard Thurston, and many more. And popular 20th and 21st century magicians include David Copperfield, Lance Burton, James Randi, Penn and Teller, David Blaine, Chris Angel, Hans Klopp, Darren Braun, and many more. And this image here is actually a David Blaine uh, magic poster that's done in the style of the early 19th century posters. So some things you guys can look out for uh, to bring this home for the estate specialist things, collectibles that are particularly valuable, um, magicians posters. So intact full original posters are rare as they were not meant to be displayed for very long. Um, antique magician and illusionist publications. The Secret of Conjuring and Magic by Jean Robert Udin. Uh, an original copy of that book um, will easily fetch in the hundreds of dollars. Tr trick props, cards, daggers, cup and ball, handcuffs, and straight jackets are just a few of the other examples of some trick prop items that are highly collectible. And here are some of the, those original posters I was telling you about, and they're sold for auction prices. So you've got the Harry Houdini escapologist, um, where he was locked in the water chest there. That sold for $144,000. And you have the Keller magician poster here with the two devils that sold this year for $5,000. So if you guys find any of those, definitely keep an eye. Those are good pieces. And then real quick, maybe if I can, just I will skip ahead to the part where the orange tree actually opens up because it's quite a trick prior to that. Beautiful cool thing this. This is Brazilian rose, wood, which was collected by John actually from Brazil and brought back. Jeez. The velvet on the sides is antique, and it comes from Belgium, antique velvet. And all the brassware around was made by the company who might well oh. indeed, might well indeed have made it for Robert Houdin himself. It's such a beautiful piece. And if you watch the tree very carefully, you should see somewhere on it, little flowers start to appear. And you can see there's one just coming here orange blossom appears there here is another one up here is another one this mechanical marvel would create orange blossoms and then as the audience watched in those days of old the, the leaves would start to move and oranges would appear on the orange tree one of the most beautiful pieces of magic ever made absolutely gorgeous and now, possibly worth more than the ring. So, if you would accept this, <laughs> still a quiver. For those who think that perhaps it was all mechanical, can I just take these off and, and show you something? The oranges were real, and they would be passed around the audience. In fact, just before this one goes, for the viewers at home, can I just show you that they really are real oranges? And if you hand those out, Debbie, to the various people around, can I just have, oh, you haven't got a clock. Never mind. Sorry. Two butterflies would rise into the air, bringing with them the handkerchief, and also bringing with them a ring. Caroline, would you just come to where I'm standing? And over here, can I just show you, there is a ring attached here. Would you say that that was the ring from Cartier? Yes. Yes? It is indeed. <laughs> and if we just remove that, and give it back. Okay, so that'll be all for today. <laughs> this is a super awesome magic trick from the 18th century, 19th century.